Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna go through a demo of a few more use cases of advanced file IO. Specifically, what I wanna show you is how to use the Fstream type and how to perform random file access. So let's get started. You can see here I have a folder called more file IO fun and in it I have a simple main.cpp that includes IO stream and F stream. So I need to include F stream in order to access the F stream type, which is one of the goals of this video is to show you how you can use F stream. So just to recap, uh, you might have used IF stream before. So this is for opening an input file for reading. You might have used OF stream before, which is opening an output file for writing. So with F stream, you can open files in more modes, right? So one mode is reading, one mode is writing. You could open a file using F stream for both reading and writing. So let me briefly go through a few of the different modes that you can use with F stream in order to open files. So let's start with uh, the simple ones. So iOS in, okay, so this is the namespace, this is the scope resolution operator, and then this is the constant denoting um, the open mode in. So this is for opening an input file for reading. Okay, we also have, of course, iOS out, which is opening a file for writing. Uh, there's also iOS uh, app for opening a file for appending. So what appending is, is it's like writing, except that if the file already exists, the contents in it are not destroyed and you can start writing to the end of the file. Okay, so the cursor starts at the end of the file, but you can't move the cursor. Okay, it always starts at the end of the file and that's where you write to. A little more powerful would be uh, the mode ATE, which is um, add at end of file. Okay, so this is like a pen, except it's a little bit more powerful because you can move the file cursor. And then the last one I'll mention here is uh, iOS binary. So far, all the files we've been working with have been plain text files, which means if we open them up in a text editor, we're gonna see letters and chars from ASCII that we recognize and we can read. If we were to say write a file in binary mode and then open up that file in a text editor, it would be in machine code, it'd be in binary and we wouldn't be able to read and interpret its contents. I'm not gonna do an example of binary um, or uh, ATE or APP in this video, but I am gonna do an example of how you can use Fstream to open a file for both reading and for writing. So first, I need to write something to a file so that I can open it for both reading and for writing. Okay, so this is kind of just a, a simple example of Fstream where I'm gonna open a file for writing. I'm gonna write something to it and then I'm gonna close it and then I'll open it up for both reading and for writing so that you can see I can read something that already exists uh, and then I can write something to that file. All right, so I'm gonna call file.open just like I would with ifstream and ofstream. I'm gonna pass in the path of the file to open. And then I have a second argument here, which is my file mode. So I wanna open this for writing. I'm gonna simply write my favorite word, hello. And then I'm gonna close the file. All right, so nothing too extreme here. I'll just compile this and run it. And there's words.txt. If I cat it, I can see hello there. Now, before I move on, let me show you something kind of interesting. So as we start to think about random access file IO, where we can move the cursor in the file, we should be able to figure out where is the cursor currently, right? Where is the cursor currently? So the previous line just wrote six bytes to the output file. Okay, so one for H, one for E, one for L, one for L, one for O, and one for the new line character, right? That's what this gives us here. So I can actually get the current position of the file cursor in the file with a call to either uh, tell P or tell G. Okay, so file dot tell P. Tell P is for, think of the P for pudding. So for out files, 
okay? Or tell G is for getting. So this would be like in files, okay? So tell P is when you're working with a file and you want its write position, and then tell G is when you're working with a file and you want its read position. I think that would be a better description here. All right, so since I've opened this file as an output file, I'm gonna use tell P in order to get its right position, and I will see out it. All right, so it says the position is six, which makes sense, right? With zero based uh, offsetting, if I write six bytes, then the position of the cursor is at the sixth byte. All right, awesome. So now let's move on to more of the heart of the demo. So now I'm going to open a file using fspring file again, and this one's gonna be words.txt, but I'm gonna open it for both reading and for writing. So I'm gonna have iOS in, this is the binary or operator, it's called the pipe symbol on your keyboard. So uh, iOS in and iOS out. Okay, so I'm opening for both reading and writing. Okay, so essentially what's happening here is we've got two constants and a binary or operation is occurring between them, which is essentially gonna combine the bits from this constant with this constant so that we can open for both in and out for reading and for writing. All right, so I know there's only one line in this file, okay, but I'm still gonna write this classic uh, not in file or not file uh, .eof just to show you that I could process a variable number of lines from the file without knowing in advance how many lines are in the file. And I'm going to read a line, which means I'm gonna need a string variable in order to store this line. I'll declare it up here. All right, so I'll do get line, reading from file, storing the line in line. If that was successful, so if file.good, then I'm simply going to see out the line that I read. Before I run this, I just wanna make sure that I don't forget to close the file. I'm not quite done with it. I'm going to do a few more things because all we did was read. I didn't actually show you how you can also write. Okay, so I opened the file. I wrote hello. I closed it. I opened it for both reading and writing. I read from it and there's hello right there. All right, so now before I close the file, here's what I want to do. I want to also write something to it. So let's do this. Let's move the cursor back to the beginning of the file. And the key part here is without closing the file. Okay, this is the random access part. I don't need to close the file in order to move the cursor. I don't need to close the file and then reopen it in order to move the cursor. Okay, so I'm gonna move the cursor back to the beginning of the file and then I'm gonna overwrite the hello with another word, perhaps goodbye. Okay, so I'm gonna overwrite it. All right, so first thing that we need to do is file.clear, okay? The reason why I need to call file.clear is to clear out the state of this file, not the contents of it, just the state of the stream associated with the file. Okay, so up here, we read until we reach the end of the file. Once the end of the file was reached, this F stream has an EOF flag or EOF bit that got set because we reached the end of the file. So we need to clear that out to denote that we're no longer gonna be at the end of the file. So I'm just gonna write, uh, clear the EOF bit. Okay, don't forget to do this or this won't work. And then we're going to seek, okay, P, right? P is for put, so for writing. We're gonna seek the write position of the file to a zero offset number of bytes from the beginning of the file, okay? So there's I'll write this the next line. So there's iOS uh, BEG for the beginning of the file. Okay, of course, naturally, then there's an iOS END for the end of the file. 
Okay, and I just want to note, if you are going to work uh, with an offset from the end of the file, then you use negative numbers, okay, because you're going back, you're going backwards in the file from the end, whereas in the beginning you're going forwards, which are positive numbers. And then the last one is uh, iOS cur, okay, so iOS cur is the current position in the file. Okay, so those are the three uh, constants or flags that you can use to denote where to move this offset number of bytes from. Okay, so I want to move the right position of my F stream to a zero byte offset from the beginning. So this moves it to the beginning of the file. All right, so now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write out goodbye. And what this is going to do is overwrite the hello on the first line. Okay, so without closing the file and reopening it, I'm gonna move the cursor back and overwrite what I just read from this file. All right, so I read hello, but let me go ahead and cat words.txt and I don't see hello anymore, I just see goodbye, okay? So for fun, let's print out a few values here so we can take a look at the read and write position and then we'll call it a wrap for this video. So let's see out, uh, let's do file dot uh, seek p, okay, remember, so, uh, excuse me, not seek p, uh, tell p, remember the p is for put, so this is the write position. And then let's also see out file dot read, uh, excuse me, file dot tell g, and the g here is for get, so this is gonna be the read position. All right, so here I'm printing out the right position, which is eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the eighth one is for the new line character, okay? And then I'm also querying the read position and the read position is in the exact same spot, okay? That's the case because I've opened this file for both reading and for writing, okay? So some things that I would encourage you to play around with is try opening a file uh, just for writing like I've done up here, print out what does tell P and what does tell G say is the, um, the write and the read position respectively, try opening a file just for reading, so iOS in, what I showed up here, and then print out uh, tell G the read position and tell P the write position. So you can see just a little bit differently how FStream behaves depending on how the file mode as used when it's opened. All right, so that is going to be the end of my video here. Hopefully you learned a few things about file modes in C++ and also random access, which is being able to move this file cursor within the file. All right, thanks for watching.